to pass by the switchbacks in this road. Yeah, right? No, this is freaking awesome. Welcome back to another episode of No Tears Frontiers. In this channel, we go all over the world on our KTM 1190 motorcycle, and we are currently headed all the way up to the top of Alaska. So we are in Idaho, a beautiful and incredible state. And we had just gone through the Sawtooth Mountains to come to Boise. Yeah. We are staying with our dear friend, Brandon Lever, here in Boise. Hi. So our Losi Nemo 2 tent, uh, which we've been traveling around the world with for the last five years, and it has been fairly dependable. It's been good. But uh, it sometimes, most of the time, quite often leaks. <laughs> um, so we have a new one. We are going to test out the Big Agnes um, Black Tail Hotel Backpack bike 2. Pack. So we set our brand new tent up last night. I'm a huge fan of cats, but the cat, the cat pissed on our brand new tent to break <laughs> it in. So, I mean, I'm trying to make it smell better, but. And the boys day out with uh -huh. uh, Brandon and his son-in-law, Dylan. Yeah, you guys went dirt biking around. Yeah, and I lived. There are beautiful things across Idaho. We are very well aware of that. And even though we had just come through the Sawtooth Mountains and stuff, we know that we haven't seen everything. But Brandon planned a day out with the motorcycles. Yeah. Actually, a day and an evening and the next day. Yeah. That was absolutely mind-blowing. Epic. It was, yes, epic. What's the name of this place? Bergdorf. Today is going to be a really awesome day. We are going to a hot springs and it's called Bergdorf. Bergdorf. Yes, we're going to the Bergdorf hot springs and um, our good friend Brandon, he's from Idaho and loves hot springs and Idaho has what, like 10,000? Yes. <laughs> a lot of hot springs. So many. I don't think Brandon's been to all of them, but he's been to a lot of them and says this one is really, really awesome. Yeah. So we're going to take the bikes up there. Bone scooters. I got a new shock on it, a beefier spring yes. added. Thanks to the guys over at Carl's yet again. Oh, yeah. Caleb gave us some stickers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Friday. Um, Thank you so much. It's so Absolutely. Awesome. My pleasure. So a <laughs> project for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of a kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is for sure. <laughs> yep. Good day. A combination of Upshift and Carl's had created a, a, a child, which yes. is the grown bike. We're thinking it's going to be the perfect spring yeah. um, for us and our two up ways. Yeah. So this is going to be a really good test run for that. And then um, we're going into the back country of Idaho. I'm excited. It should be a good day. Yes. Trying to find Bergendorf and the Burger Ber King. Bergdorf. <laughs> Burger King popped up. <laughs> no, Dorfberg. Dorfberg. I don't know. <laughs> I gotta get my boots on. I got my new climb pants today. Check these out. Because we're going to hot springs, I'm wearing my bathing suit underneath. So um, I'm ready to just get off the motorcycle and jump right in. Though it's supposed to be quite hot. So I, I don't know if I want to jump right in. I'll put my toes in. <laughs>
could have fathomed. It was really exciting to be able to launch ourselves north towards new meadows and yeah. all the adventures we had along the way. was going to be these hot springs called Bergdorf. Mm -hmm. Fun and name to say. Sounds like something out Harry <laughs> yeah, Potter. It's very, very yeah. cool. Harry Potter Junior High was Bergdorf. The road there was beautiful. The scenery was changing into from kind of the grasslands and the hills into pine forests. And when we got there, initially that little gravel road getting to Bergdorf yeah, for we, the first two miles was super slippery. Yeah, we turned right or left onto this little gravel road, and I can, I've can i been on gravel road a billion times. Yeah. But the uh, first, like, two miles of this, and he says it's always bad for the first two miles, so I don't know yeah. if they're just continually, continuously putting fresh gravel on that doesn't settle, but, like, yeah, it was right. very unsettling. It was, <laughs> you know... Where the yeah. bike is, you know, shifting back and forth, and there's all these like little mohawks of of gravel that yeah. you gotta kind of pick your own lane and try to stay in it as much as you can. But, but we survived. We survived, <laughs> and we made it. Uh, a little, a little tense in a couple moments, but yeah. I was able to relax and melt all that tension away once we got to to Bergdorf. Yes, we've arrived, Bergdorf. So these are natural hot springs. Apparently there are hot springs all across yeah. the state of Idaho. Minnesota is the <laughs> land of lakes, but Idaho right. is the land of hot springs. And Absolutely. Brandon knows just about every one of them. He does. And these are some of his favorites. Huh. Dutch. I'm Dutch. Tim's Dutch. Kind of cool. Look at this old place. Bark still on it. to the hot springs. Ooh! It is quite warm. Ooh! That's nice though. Ooh! It's deep! <laughs> and the really magical part was we had it all to ourselves. Yeah, there was just the three of us and it just was us. awesome. Another really cool thing about Bergdorf is that these hot springs and the buildings around it, it was all built by these frontiersmen who were mining mm -hmm. for gold in the area. And so all those wooden log buildings were made in like the 1800s. Yeah. There's like an old decaying Chevy from the 50s, but they're much, they predate that old rotting Chevy that was parked <laughs> out there. But yeah, it was beautiful. And to think, you know, like these miners that were, they didn't work for very much cash, but it was, yeah. it was after a hard day's work, able to <gasps> sit in these hot springs. Must that, have been heaven. Mm -hmm. also pretty high altitude, 7,000 something feet, and so um, the sun was pretty intense when we were there. Ready for the sun. But also you can imagine that the winters are pretty harsh. Yeah. So as a Frontiers miner, 
Oh, this hot, these hot springs would have been saving grace yeah. completely. Yeah, and even for a no-tier adult, yeah. it was very nice. Now they have the main pool, which is 93 to 95 degrees. Then they have these two roast you like a lobster yes. pools on the side, which are like 115 degrees. Yeah. Brandon went in, but I, I couldn't get past my no. ankles. It was you know, too hot. And I went into the main pool for a good half hour, 45 minutes or so. But then, like, I was I was hydrating, you know, as much yeah. as I could. But I was I was pulled out. If I was a frog, you couldn't trick me with the little temperature, <laughs> little by little thing. Because I, my body was like, hey man, <laughs> this, get out. this has been fun, but. Get out now. Oh, I was tricked. Yeah. <laughs> I stayed in there. I was I was loving every second of it. It was really nice. Yeah. And finally, after about two hours of soaking in yeah. the hot springs, we decided, all right, it's time to get back on the road. And we were going to be headed that night to stay at Brandon's little cabin that he New built. New Meadows, yeah. Yeah. And so I didn't think that there was going to be much of anything to see between the hot springs and the cabin. All I knew was, oh, we're going to the hot springs and then we're going to the cabin. Yeah. But the road in between that we took, wow. I think it's part of the Idaho BDR, so yeah, that's so. just another little section of the BDRs that we've accomplished, and we've yeah. only had small little sampler packs of of all the, the BDRs, but each one of them is amazing in its own right, and this one lived up to, to the rest that we've been down. This is actually part of the Idaho BDR. Oh, really? Yeah. That makes sense, because it's a really cool road. It's a a little bit of off-road, but nothing too technical. Yeah, nothing too technical. Just usually when we do off-road, we're not following someone. This is awesome, and Brandon is awesome, but dust to the face. But, There's a lot of dust. Yeah. And, you know, we're cutting through forests, and it's beautiful. The road was still gravel, but no more of that lifty, shifty gizm stuff. Yeah, none of that. And then we got to, like, these switchbacks. Yeah! And you, you know when the mountain is breaking and that there's going to be a valley and a vista. But then, as you make this turn, you see that the road just curves and switchbacks and forth, back and forth, all the way down steeply to the very river at the bottom yeah. of the valley. It was a dusty road, to be honest. And so yes. we kept our distance from, from Brandon. And mm -hmm. then, you know, we took the lead for a little bit just because eating dust and the, yeah. the air intake of the bike, but it was, I was just Gorgeous. having an amazing time. I like these little red Indian paintbrushes, what did you call them? Those are too. Oh, I don't know. It was wow. completely unexpected, and that's what we really love about travel, and even though Brandon had told us that it's a nice road, or he didn't get too far in depth, and mm -hmm. man, he under he under under undersold it. Yeah, <laughs> it was fantastic. Wow! And I hadn't seen a road like that since Peru with that many switchbacks that just curved yeah. steeply. I guess Schaefer Pass is a little bit like that, but um, this was this was really remarkable. 
Once we got to the bottom, we hit a little stream and then that eventually opened up to the Salmon River. And again, my jaw just dropped. probably from glacial runoff, from the winter. Frigid cold water, going from hot springs <laughs> to frigid cold water. Certainly, yes. It's a really pretty ride. And we were kind of riding along a cliff side of it and the sun was going down a bit. And so the river was sparkling in the yeah. sunlight. Wow, what a ride. We made it to New Meadows, which is where Brandon has his little cabin. And I mean, by when we rolled up, the sun was beginning to, to set and, you know, we're in like this tall grass grazing area that his neighbors, he lets his, his cow to pasture and, you know, graze. It was knee high seeded grass blown in the wind and there's this Beautiful. old rickety fence that is going off and then the mountains in the distance and then the sun setting. It was it was really, really beautiful. It was, what you know, day. like Windows 97 screensaver worthy. It was yes. fantastic. It is a tiny house. It is. So when you think cabin, you might think several rooms, but this is a one room tiny house that he built himself. Wow, we're gonna smell each other's farts. His craftsmanship is incredible. And we were able to stay in the little loft area yeah, of it. Yeah, indeed. He had a beautiful wood stove, so he goes there in the winter time, goes skiing. So a very fitting end to a glorious day. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, my dear. Then the next morning when we woke up, Brandon was already making breakfast and coffee and... Somehow he had transported six eggs, not hard boiled, on, on the motorcycle. motorcycle. Through the, the whole crazy, time. yeah. <laughs> Bouncing up and down and around, you know, all I can think of was that, like, you know, the fifth grade <laughs> science experiment egg drop thing, and I'm like, I did not do as well as you, because... We've tried to transport eggs, and it's yeah, never it gone not, that well. No, Hard-boiled <laughs> eggs? I can't even transport those very well. No. <laughs> but he miraculously got those eggs to the cabin, so we had a lovely breakfast, and then he invited his friend over who lives in the area oh, yeah. that we call... Cowboy Mike. Cowboy Mike. And he was a cowboy. Yes, he is. Named Mike. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yep. Uh, let's see if I can remember the words. And he's also a very good yodeler. This is true. So he was able to entertain us that morning with some beautiful yodeling. Oh, Brandon and his BJs. Oh, my oh the onesies. <laughs> uh, how does that start? Uh, 
Oh, saddle your worries to a cowboy, sound and yodel your troubles away. Brandle your sorrows as they go roving by with the Kai. Just throw your rope around the sun as he rolls by, so you can keep him shining way up there in the sky. Saddle your worries to a cowboy, sound and yodel your troubles away. Yeah, he told some cowboy tales of life on the range and yeah. then really oddly switched over to some yodeling, which I'd never thought went hand in hand there. But Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that he yodels when he's out with the cows and just you know trying to entertain himself he'll pick up a new song and practice it and i'm sure the cows get used to it and they kind of know him and his horses and everything so it must be very comforting for them yeah and then his horses he, he was gonna load them up or wrangle them whatever cowboys do right <laughs> and so he said why don't you come on over and take a look at the horses and man Wow. He had this behemoth tank of a horse that... They're Belgian horses, which are huge draft horses. Yeah. Wow, how tall 18, is he? 18-1, pushing 18 it. Yeah, new. I saw this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Where do you measure it? Uh, from the highest bony part of their back. Right about here. Oh, wow. So... It was about as wide as I was tall from shoulder to shoulder. It was yeah. crazy. He uses them for pulling plows and weights like that yeah. so um they're very very useful for that but absolutely massive you yeah. can see all that muscle um being used for all the heavy weights they have to pull yeah marissa tried to walk the big one uh around and <laughs> it wasn't yeah. having it he, he wouldn't do it <laughs> ace is his name he's a he's a little reluctant sometimes Ace, get up. Ace, get up. Like, I was stronger than that. And I, I, uh, I have a love-hate, well, a love-non-trust relationship with horses, but I tried to walk it around, and it, it followed me, which was Yeah, nice, he followed but, you, for sure. Which is weird, because I was, you know, they say horses can sense, you know, being nervous and such, and I was definitely nervous. I don't, like, mm. this thing could, you know, destroy me. Yeah, I was I was like, come on, let's go. And I'm like, there's no way I can force this yeah. giant creature to move a muscle. <laughs> it's not a chance. But he'll fill out as he as he matures. He'll be a he'll be a one ton horse when he matures. You are a beast. <laughs> but they were beautiful. He had like eight or nine horses and yeah. each one was beautiful in its own right. I love their soft, soft lips. An awesome day with good coffee and eggs. I listened to some yodeling, saw some horses, <laughs> and then uh, an awesome ride back to, to Boise. Yeah, we pretty much took the main road back to Boise. It was still beautiful. Yeah. altitude it got hotter and hotter yes, and hotter. <laughs> trying to soak up the heat as much as we can now because we know we're heading to colder areas soon enough and we'll be like oh remember the sunny bright days yeah. in Idaho <laughs> but I feel so happy with our backcountry adventures into yeah. Idaho and I thank you Brandon so much for taking us out there. You've been there. an amazing host I and mean, he let us bother him for about a week and a half so we are uh, forever grateful for your hospitality and your, your tour guide and your, your local knowledge. And it's just been absolutely fantastic. And your cowboy hats. And your cowboy hats. <laughs> so tomorrow we are off to the Overland Expo Pacific Northwest, the inaugural 
Pacific Northwest Expo. Yes, in Oregon, a and state that we've never been to on the motorcycle on before. The motorcycle. I've never been there. At I have all. been there, and it's beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited! But yeah, so we'll we'll be able to present and tell our story and get to talk one on one, which is always some of our favorite things to do. And yeah, yeah. and then after that, it's a direct shot up through BC. And to, Alaska. and to Alaska, to the Yukon and beyond. Yeah. So stay tuned for our next episode, and I hope you liked traveling with us on this one. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. Oh, that's the same thing. I'm not prepared. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, that was wonderful. Oh, Thank you so much.